Hey, what's going on guys? Today I want to talk to you about the Canon 100 to 400 version 2 lens. Now I apologize, I don't have this lens here to show you while I'm talking about this. I previously recorded the video and I ended up having an audio problem that I wasn't aware of until after I shipped the lens back. I only had the lens for a few weeks and I got to test it out. So I apologize for that, but I don't I think that you guys are smart enough that you don't need a constant visual reminder of what I'm talking about. So let's jump right into it. I want to start this review off by saying that I really like the version 2 lens. I think it's a very good lens. Having said that, I disagree with a lot of bloggers and different websites that I've read the reviews on for this lens. I think some people are being motivated more by money than being truthful about this lens. I don't think that this lens is for everybody. I don't think that it's the perfect telephoto lens out there. So I'll get into that here a little bit more uh, towards the end of this video. So let's start off by talking about the size and the weight. The weight of this lens is roughly the same as the 70 to 200. It's very easy to handhold even all day long. I don't think I ever put it on a monopod. I definitely didn't put it on a tripod and it was no problem at all. When the lens is retracted, it folds up very small and very compact. Uh, I was able to put it, I carry like a little man purse camera bag with me whenever I go to events that usually has like a wide angle lens and batteries, stuff like that. And it's kind of a pain whenever I take a long telephoto lens because usually they don't fit in that bag. And with this lens, I was able to put it in that bag and it was a breeze to, to transport. Now, whenever it's fully extended out to 400 millimeters, it is rather large. Uh, but again, it's well balanced and the weight's not a problem at all. As far as image quality goes, this lens is capable of producing some very sharp images. I recently started shooting for maxpreps.com. For those of you in the States that are familiar with it, uh, there's been some complaints from other photographers about Max Preps's image standards, about how they only want tack sharp images and things like that, which I don't necessarily have a problem with. Um, but I was a little concerned because my first few galleries I submitted to them, I was using the 100-400. I didn't know if it was going to meet their image quality standards and I had absolutely no problems. Not a single image was rejected. So it is capable of delivering some very sharp images. Now in terms of autofocus speed and accuracy, it does for the most part perform very well, but I did run into problems. I ran into problems in lower light situations. For example, I was shooting a tennis match on an overcast day and I ran into problems not where the images were coming out out of focus but where I was getting a very high rate of soft images. When it was well lit and the sun was shining I had virtually no problems with the autofocus but on overcast days and late in the afternoon as it began to get dark I began to run into some inconsistency issues with the autofocus. Now I have read on a few forums where people have said that they felt the autofocus slowed down in lower light situations I didn't necessarily perceive that it was going slower, although that may have been what the problem was and why I was getting softer images. All I know is I was getting a higher rate of soft images than what I normally do. I also ran into a few problems where when I was shooting something close to me at 100 millimeters and then I would try to shoot something far away from me at 400 millimeters where the autofocus would hunt back and forth before it would find something to lock onto. Now this problem didn't happen every time and that was what was extremely frustrating is because I don't know why it was doing that. But I had the lens for a few weeks. I ran into that problem when I was shooting um, some softball games and I also ran into that problem a lot whenever I was shooting swimming. For whatever reason with this lens, uh, well let me back up. I photograph a lot of swimming because I do it both for professionally and then I have two kids that swim so I'm at swim meets all the time. And so I'm pretty comfortable with my ability to photograph swimming and what to expect out of a lens. And with the 100 to 400, I ran into some consistency issues where it was wanting to lock on to the splashing water a lot. And um, I don't want to say horribly inconsistent results because it wasn't horribly inconsistent. It was just more inconsistent than with any other lens that I've ever used to shoot swimming. And again, I don't have an explanation for that. But having said that, despite the inconsistent performance of this lens, and now I'm comparing this to Canon's other lenses and also the Sigma lenses I shoot with. So, you know, I'm not comparing this to low end lenses. I'm comparing it to lenses that I feel are fairly consistent. So despite the issues that I had with the lens not being as consistent as I would like, I still, think that this lens is worth purchasing for certain people. And the reason is, 
even though I did get a higher rate of soft images. And again, these weren't out of focus. They were just a little bit soft. And if you're not a pixel peeper, you probably never noticed the difference, but I do pixel peep, so I did notice the difference. But despite the fact that I was getting these soft images, I still liked using this lens, one, because I was able to completely handhold it all the time. And for me, that's a big convenience to just be able to swing the lens around and not have to worry about a monopod or the extra weight or anything like that but also because of the extreme focal range that you get. You can go all the way from 100 to 400 millimeters and that opened up a whole wide range of shots that normally I wouldn't be able to shoot at because either maybe the action's too close, the action's too far away. So even though I did get a slightly higher rate of soft images, at the end of the day, I was still coming home with more tack sharp images than I normally do from events because I was able to shoot more of the field or more of the swimming pool because I, even though I do crop my images, I, di I don't crop heavily, and this allowed me to be able to get those shots out into the shallow outfield or all the way across the swimming pool, whatever the case may be, whatever I was photographing, I had a wider range of shots to take. A few things about this lens that I do like, I like the fact that the minimum focusing distance on this is about three and a half feet, which is really nice to have a telephoto lens that extends as long as this one does, and to be able to get as close as three and a half feet and still be able to get pictures. Whenever I shoot like with my Sigma 120 to 300, it's frustrating because sometimes I find myself having to back up to get shots. The other thing that is really highly praised about this lens is the image stabilization and it does work phenomenally. I've heard people saying that they've been able to get uh, sharp images down to like a 10th of a second, 15th of a second. Um, I really, I did play with it a little bit, but I don't tend to shoot very often with extremely slow shutter speeds for a couple of reasons. One is because I photograph a lot of sports and even when I'm not photographing sports, I'm photographing people and flat out people move too much. And so shooting at a 10th of a second or a 15th of a second, obviously for sports, it's not going to work. But even whenever you're doing portraits and things like that, it, if you're photographing people, you're going to get motion blur in it. So for me personally, that's not a huge issue, but I can tell you it does work very well on this lens. So like I said at the beginning of this video, I think that there's people who are saying things about this lens that I, I, that I just don't agree with. And I hate to second guess somebody and say, well, I don't agree with you, so you're wrong. But I've seen some statements online that I think are just kind of ridiculous about this lens. And I'll explain to you why I kind of think that these people don't believe what they're saying. On, so, on a lot of photography websites, they use what's called affiliate marketing. So they will review a lens and then they'll give you a link to purchase that lens from B&H, Adorama, Amazon, a whole bunch of different places. And when you use that link and you go over and you buy that lens for this lens that's right about $2,200, they're going to get a kickback of anywhere from $80 to $125 from that place if you buy the lens using the links they provide. And so I think as a result of that, these people have now basically become car salesmen of trying to push products on you and get you to buy it and buy it right there using the links they provide. And so it's difficult for me to believe when somebody makes a statement that in my opinion is ridiculous and then they say you should buy it, here's a link to buy it it makes it difficult for me to actually think that they even believe what they say. I know people are gonna disagree with some of the things that I have to say or some of the shooting styles or equipment that I use, and that's fine, everybody's entitled to their opinion. That's one of the great things about photography is there's a lot of ways to do things and they're not necessarily wrong. But I'll give you an example. I saw a, a, one very large review site where they said that this lens replaced their 70 to 200 in their bag and that they shoot at 400 millimeters f5.6 and they get the same amount of background blur for shooting portraits as they would with the 70 to 200 shooting at f2.8 well there's just a lot of issues with that and i for any portrait photographer shooting at 400 millimeters is just going to be it's just going to be a nightmare it's not going to give you the same uh, depth of field at 400 5, 6 as 200 2, 8. there's so many things wrong with that the same person also said that this lens replaced their dedicated macro lens and their camera bag. And yes, because this lens does allow you to get relatively close with your focusing and you can zoom into 400 millimeters, it does give you more magnification than most lenses do, but it's not a dedicated macro lens. And these statements are just so far outside the box that it's ridiculous in my opinion. I also saw on another site where they talked about photographing basketball with this and using this for event photography. And the person said, just push your ISO up to 20,000. Today's modern cameras can handle that. 
And here's the thing, these people are pushing this on newer photographers and they're saying if you can only have one telephoto lens, it should be this lens. Well, for most people, if this is going to be their only telephoto lens, that means you're shooting on a crop sensor camera. And, if, and Canon's crop sensor cameras, with the exception of the 7D Mark II, do terrible when you have to bump your ISO up. They have horrible noise performance. So using this lens, first of all, most of Canon's um, crop sensor cameras won't even go up to ISO 20,000 natively. You have to put it into an expanded mode, and even then I don't think most of them will go up to 20,000. And your, the images are just going to be terrible. They're going to be so bad. What's the point of spending $2,200 on a lens just to end up getting mediocre images? You might as well just go ahead and use your kit lens if all you want is mediocre images. So flat out, I don't agree with these websites that are sitting there saying this is the best telephoto lens ever made. I, I don't even think the people who are making these statements believe it. Do I think it's a very good lens? Do I think it's a very practical lens? Yes, if you're gonna be shooting in well-lit situations, I think that it is a very good lens. If you're gonna be shooting sports outside or wildlife, things like that, it's a very good lens. If you're gonna be shooting in low-light situations, you wanna shoot football games on a Friday night or baseball games in the evening, you know, anything like that, this lens flat out isn't gonna work for you because you're, you're gonna to have to bump your ISO up so high it's gonna really deteriorate your images. So again, I think that this lens is worth buying for a select group of people. In terms of versatility, I still think that the best lens that a new photographer or any photographer can get is a 70 to 200 millimeter f2.8 lens that'll allow you to shoot portraits, it'll allow you to shoot in low light, and it gives you some telephoto reach for shooting things like sports, and if you need it, buy a teleconverter and add some extra reach. I think that that is the best option if you can only have one telephoto lens is the 70 to 200. So I hope that helps you guys out. If you guys have any questions or you just disagree with me, leave me a comment below. I'd love to hear from you. Uh, again, just to, just to clarify, I think the Canon 100 to 400 is a worthwhile lens for anybody who is going to be shooting in well-lit situations. Despite the fact that it does have some inconsistency issues in the autofocus, it's a great lens. So thanks for watching guys. Have a great day.